Okay. We thank Hashem that we're able to learn every day. It's about learning with Shem, the Bishop Migdash. Immediately today, uh, we're going to start on the Pyur, the Medalef. Start from Amar Abaya. It's about halfway down the page. Is that correct? That's where mm -hmm. we left off, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, Amar Abaya. Abaya says, Shimon HaTzadik. You mentioned yesterday that Shimon HaTzadik would not eat from a sacrifice of an Asha, of a, of a Nazar, a guilt offering of a Nazar that became Tameh except in one situation where he did, because he felt that they regretted that they took on the Naziris, and they weren't really sincere about this because they took it on for a certain amount of time, then they became impure, and then they had to redo it. He felt that they regretted it. Well, that's Shimon Atzadik's view. And Abaya continues and he says, Reb Shimon, and also Reb Shimon. Yesterday we learned from Reb Shimon that, um, Sages said, the Rabbi Yehuda said that the Hasidim wanted to bring a carbon chatas because uh, they wanted to do everything. Hasidim are Rishayim, right? They wanted to bring, a, they wanted to do every mitzvah. And one of them is to bring a carbon chatas. The problem with the carbon chatas is that the person first has to do a sin inadvertently. And the sages would never do a sin in, even inadvertently. The, the, the Hasidim are Rishayim. So how would they do this? So they would become a Nazar. And Rabbi Shimon argued on this and he says, no, they wouldn't become a Nazar. They, because um, a Nazar has a, an aspect of a sin to it, so they wouldn't do that either. Now, um, and Abai Zan, he says, Rabbi Lazar Akapar, Yent, Rabbi Lazar Akapar, Kulam Shita Achosim, they're all one opinion. Now, we didn't learn Rabbi Lazar Akapar yet. What do they all hold? The Nazar Chaytahabe, that the Nazar is a sinner, He's committing a sin by becoming a Nazar. Well, Shimon HaTzadik, Reb Shimon HaDamran, Shimon HaTzadik and Reb Shimon, we mentioned already what it is that, they, what, that the sin was. Shimon HaTzadik, because he became Tameh and he regretted that he took on this Naziris. And Reb Shimon's view was that there is an aspect of a sin when he becomes a Nazar. And Reb Lazar Kapa Berebi, Reb Lazar Kapa the Great, space. Tanya was taught in a bright Rabbi Lazar Akapa Berebi Yemen. Rabbi Lazar Akapa the Great says. That's what Akapa means? No, Berebi means the Great. Akapa, I don't know what Akapa means. But probably a place. Maybe it comes from Kafrisin. Cyprus. Maybe uh, he worked with, um, um, what are they they're called? The, um, what are the little things they put on the salmon? Those little green things they put on the locks? Capers. Maybe he worked with capers, a copper. Do they have a do they have a note on a copper? No, I can't. I can't uh, find it. That's why I was asking. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, The meaning of the title of copper may refer to the place where he lived or to his occupation, which may have involved wool. Wool, as in wool is porkin. Porkin. I don't see the connection, but um, they have an inscription here that reads this is the study hall of Rablazar copper. Okay. Mine is, my shot is better. He worked with uh, capers. Sold caper berries. But this was a real guy. So he had his own study hall. All right. So what does yeah. Rabbi Lazar Kapper say? It says um, Rabbi Lazar Kapper, the Tanya Rabbi Lazar Kapper, Aimer, Rabbi Lazar Kapper, Rabbi Yomer the Great. He says, "The chipper I love meshachat ala nefesh." He brings the sacrifice uh, that will atone for him because he sinned. What was sin? Did he do? The chibe is a nefesh chat as a Funny. I would say which soul did this person sin with? I don't know what nefesh means. What? 
you know, but there's an expression here, which is interesting. I don't know, I'm not sure why it's, it's written like that. Um, the sin that he did was that he afflicted himself from not drinking wine. Uh, El Khanan uh, has to put this on his logo. The matter is uh, is uh, If someone that just doesn't drink wine becomes a sinner, someone that afflicts himself from everything. For sure, that's a bad thing. Anyone that sits and fasts considered a sinner. The Gemara asks the question, one second, but this Pasuk isn't talking about a regular Nazar. It's talking about a Nazar that became Tomic. Gemara answers, It's because it's a second, he's a, he's, this is his second uh, felony. He um, he uh, he he has to do it again, so that's why he, it's called over here that he's uh, that he's a sinner. But really, it's coming to tell us that the first time was also a problem. He becomes tummy. He has to redo the the count of the naziris. I guess this would go along with that Gemara that says leidayach um, mashas uh, It's not enough that the Torah made things forbidden to you. Do you have to? Go and, uh, and make other things forbidden. It was, I think you're Shalmi or something like that. Don't we come up to that in this? This is it. Later on. About if the Nasser is uh, fighting. You shouldn't take on. No. Also go with like. Uh, oh. That's what you think it is. Um, um, no, I don't think it has to do with that because when you when you're adding to the Torah would be when you say that this is something the Torah prohibits. He knows the Torah doesn't prohibit this. He's just taking on extra things because he wants to be more uh, more righteous. So, But it's not, he, he knows there's only six or 15 mitzvahs in the second. Rabbi? Yeah. One second. Oh. Oh, yeah, that could be. That could be. But that's not the problem of adding to the Torah. Adding to the Torah is because the Torah has, always has to be in its pristine. Uh, yeah, Dr. Stein. I was just going to say, maybe when it uses the Lush and Nefesh, it's the equivalent of Yetzir, and basically it's like a Chesidah Yetzir Hara, you know, or Yetzir Tov, you know, which is Chaser in the Kalas Tishen. What he wanted to do really was in the wrong direction, and that's uh -huh. because he used the wrong nefesh in his desire. Very, very and, good. Very good. Very good. Nefesh could also mean rotten. I don't know. I don't have the example in my head, but I have I have that idea in my head that nefesh could mean rotten, like uh, what he wanted to do, which which also could mean which yetzer, you know, which inclination did he sin? Did he? What was this? Uh, what was his desire here? Well, he um, he abstained from wine. Okay, so Hillel says that the problem is that the people the people that um, take on these things these extra things, they feel higher than everyone else. So that's the problem. That's uh, the interesting, uh, interesting thing. What do they say from uh, Trump Shemfel Hirsch? He said when he's going to go to heaven. So he said, uh, the Abish is going to tell him, Shamshan, did you see my Alps? You have to take the, you have to enjoy what the, the natural enjoyments of this world. Okay. I don't know if that's supposed to be in there. Probably. Someone says, do you have in your text? 
Haim, if someone that says, in yeshivas, they tell us that if it's in parentheses, you don't read it. If it's in um, brackets, you read it. But they told us. Someone that says, Kainam, Kainach, Kainas, Hariel, Kunayim, Lakarban. What we're learning now are the substitute terms for the vow, where someone, uh, the original way that someone makes a vow is he says that this food should be forbidden to me like a sacrifice, like a carbon. And now we're learning, let's say he doesn't say the word carbon, let's say he uses a substitute word. So what would the substitute words be? So instead of carbon, he says kainam, or he says kainach, and I got the ches in there, or kainas. So these are the substitutes. Cherech, cheref, cherech, cheref. Those are substitute words for for cherem. Cherem means when something's dedicated to the base of Middash, to the Beda Kabayas, to the temple treasury. Nazik, Naziach, Paziach. These are substitute words for becoming a Nazir. What is that? Nazik, Naziach, and Paziach. Shavusa, Shakuka. Neither b'mai b'maihi. So harei l'kneim l'shvua. These are substitute words for an oath. How did neither b'mai end up being a substitute word for an oath? Well, um, very interesting. The word mohi is actually a nickname for Moshe, like Moi. I have a friend Moi. His name is Moshe. Moi. Called the Moe as a kid, and not this till then. So, um, big Mo. Big Mo. <laughs> so, neither Bermai means that he takes the vow of Moshe. When Moshe took a vow, this is one shot over here. Moshe took a vow that he's not going to leave his father in law unless he took an oath. Uh, he, he took an oath, a Shua, by Yoel Moshe. And he's not going to leave his father-in-law without his permission, right? He's not going to go back to Egypt, to Midian. Right? He, um, he agreed to stay. That's it. The Gemara tells us that was a vow, that he's not going to leave. So that if the person takes a vow like that, so that would be a, a, a nickname for a shvua. That would be good enough for an oath. Okay, now we have the big machlaikas. Itmar. Was stated, kinuyim. When it comes to these substitute words that we just had, we just had a Mishnah that introduced all these substitute words. Well, Rabbi Yechonon Amar Lashon Umesim. Rabbi Yechonon says these are other languages that the sages were familiar with. You know, the seventy languages. Or um, today, I think they, they, there's a big machlekes. How many languages there are? Because machlekes is between people that bundle languages together, and they're all considered one language. You know. Like um, like uh, Flemish and Dutch and Afrikaans and you know the, and they put together English and Ebonics and the and the, all of that and, um, and then there's people that separate that everything is a different language so based on that there's come up with it's like the difference in thousands <laughs> so um, how many whatever the languages are Rabbi Yechonon says that the sages were familiar with those words of carbon in other languages. And it'd be like Google Translate. And you'd go down the Google Translate, you'd get kainam, kainach, kainas. That would be all substitutes for for carbon. Now there is another pshat. Other pshat is lashon umesin, is that people that spoke other languages did not speak Hebrew correctly. And lashon umes means that if their first language was something else, the way they would say the Hebrew word would be kainam, kainach, kainas. That in those locations they couldn't pronounce the Hebrew properly, and that's an, another shot over here. But either way, it's it's an actual pronunciation of a word that's coming from a certain place. Reb Shimon ben Lakish, Amar Reb Shimon ben Lakish is the brother-in-law of Reb Yechonon, right? And his chavrusa, he says, no, that's not the pshat. Lashon Shabbat Lam Chachamim Lias Neiderbay. It's the sages that Badu um, Lahem Chachamim that uh, invented. Badu is to, is to invent. They, it, it's the uh, uh, an expression that the say that the sages invented 
to use as a, for vows. And why would they do that? We'll see in a, in a minute. It's funny, the Gemara here has to tell me what the word Bada means. Um, by uh, Yeravam ben Nevat, he, um, he, uh, he stopped the people. Yeravam ben Nevat was the first king of the north. He stopped the people from going back to Yerushalayim. And um, he didn't want people to go to Yerushalayim and see that the king of Yehuda was able to sit in the Azara. And that would make him look like he's not a real king. Because he wasn't allowed to sit in the Azara. So he blocked the, 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 the roads. No one was allowed to go. He blocked the internet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to watch the Kotel online. Uh, so um, uh, so he, he blocked the road, so they shouldn't go to, to um, Yerushalayim. And then he recreated uh, two temples, one in Don and one in uh, and somewhere else, I forget where. Uh, they, they, they set up idols there, golden calves. And, um, and then he made a new holiday. He made a brand new holiday. Instead of Sukkot, he made it on the 15th of Cheshvan. Yeah, 15th of Cheshvan. The, fourth, the 15th of Cheshvan became the holiday of, of, for him. But the Pasuk says, in the month that he invented on his own. So to, totally a brand new holiday. Just for uh, his people, they should have a holiday. Well, uh, we now know what the, learned, what the word Bada means. Yeah, I, I was at Rabbi Sitchin's uh, Fabrengen this week. Oh, that's a code to live. <laughs> Uh, and he says, he was saying from the Bnei Sasra that when Mashiach comes, that holiday that Yeruvim made is actually going to be celebrated and it's going to be a real holiday. Yeruvim was really in tune with, even though he was wicked, but he was a big Talmud Chacham. He says, uh, Yeruvim and, and, um, and who was the prophet then? Achia uh, Shilaini. Yeruvim and Achia Shilaini. It says, Vayib Yosem Basada. That they were uh, they were in the field, and the Gemara tells us that they were both together in level in the field. Yeravam and Achia Shilani were both the same, uh, both the same level in time. Anyway, so um, here it says So we have uh, 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 the word invention bada. Time of my tekina rabbanu So now we have to go explain Rishlakish. Why would the sages? invent words that should be used as substitute words for carbon. My answer is the Lelema carbon. They don't want them to use the word carbon. So they invented new words instead of the word carbon. Lelema carbon, big deal, let them say carbon. My says, no, Dilma ma carbon la shem. They're gonna, it, it, the, the Pasuk says carbon la shem. So if they use the word carbon, they may end up finishing it off and saying the word Hashem, saying the name of God's Shem's name. Just like, you know, by the certain aliyahs that the Balkaira, um, everyone knows it so well that the, everyone like shouts it out, like out of habit. Yeah, you have in the sky, you know, like <laughs> sometimes the Balkaira like pauses for everyone to get it out and then he says it on his own. But um, afraid people are going to finish off the Pasuk. You carbon Lashem. The Gemara says, so what? Lema carbon Lashem. What's wrong with finishing the Pasuk? Says Dilma Amar La Hashem Amar Karban. Maybe he's just going to say Hashem, and he's not going to say the word Karban. But Kamapik Shem La Shemayim La Vatel, and then he's going to be saying Hashem's name in vain. Is that really Hashem's name in vain? Let's take a look. We'll go further. We'll see. Um, Uh, I guess there's a, the word is also cheirem Lashem. We would have to add that in to fit with our Mishnah because we also have a substitute word for cheirem. It would also have to be shvua Lashem. We'd also have to have that in a Pasuk. I guess it is. Well, the Tanyan, we have a Brisa. Rabshim Shimon says, Lashem How do you know that a person shouldn't say, that this is a for Hashem and Ayla, for Hashem and Mincha, for Hashem a Thanksgiving offering, for Hashem a Shlomim. Talmud Leimar Karban Lashem. The Pasuk says it's a sacrifice for Hashem. Okay. Um, 
the uh, commentary here says, right in the, the Rashi uh, position commentary, he says maybe he's going to say Lashem, and he's not going to end up saying Karban. Um, I don't know if he's saying he's just not going to finish it off. If that's what he meant, so why is that a problem? If he meant that it's a carbon for Hashem, so why does he have to say carbon Hashem? If he just says Hashem, it's also good, no? It means the carbon Hashem. Why is it like, uh, unless maybe what he says is Hashem, and then he changes his mind, he doesn't want to give it. Maybe that's the shot. He doesn't want to give it. And he didn't say the word carbon. He says, okay, it's over. And he already had said the first word. So if the first word was carbon, so what, then it's too late, it's carbon. But he thinks that because the first word was Hashem, he can stop right there. And then it's actually Lavatala. Then he said it in vain. Maybe that's the shot. I don't know. The reason for this is that if one first says to the Lord, perhaps he will change his mind and not complete the sentence. Very good. In order to avoid consecrating the offering, he will have uttered the name of God. Amen. Okay. Very good. That's the shot. But I, the, the, the Mefarish, the Mefarish doesn't spell that out. Okay. Well, uh, um, uh, um, the Gemara says, V'kalvachaymer. This is the Bryce. And it's a Kalvachaymer Mazer, Shleinus Gavan, Elahaz, Geshem, Shemayim, Ala Karban. This person was saying Hashem's name with the intention of, a, of saying that it's a sacrifice or saying that it's in the position as a, of a sacrifice, like it's forbidden as a sacrifice. Well, Amra Taira Karban Hashem Taira says, You have to be careful the way you say it. Levatala, Alachas Kama Vakama. For sure, someone just says Hashem's name in vain. For sure, that's a big problem. Now the Gemara says, We just said that there's a machlekas between Rabbi Yechanan and Rish Lakish. Rabbi Yechanan said that the word kainam, kainach, kainas are actual languages, are actual pronunciations coming from some place. And Rish Lakish says that, no, this is what the sages invented in order for people not to say the word carbon because they're going to end up saying Hashem's name. So we start off saying, blessed, blessed are you, and we say Hashem. Yeah, in the end, in the end of it, it's all a blessing for Hashem that that um, we finished off with who created this food, whichever type it is. But what do you want to do? You want to put the food first? Seems like if you were doing no, that, here, it's kind of like putting, they, they don't want to put No, over here, it's, over here it's different because over here, um, what he really wants to say is that it's, forbidden to him like a sacrifice. So if you're gonna start off with something that's not necessary, and that's Hashem's name, and then you stop, and then and then you change your mind. What you're asking is that maybe he's gonna change his mind from eating the food and he already said Hashem's name, but. No, but I got the shot. This is not necessary for the food right. it is. Right, he has to say Hashem's name for the food. That's part of the blessing. But here, he doesn't have to say Hashem's name for the sacrifice. He can just say it's forbidden like a sacrifice. They can't get away with it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess in order to avoid that, coming onto that, they made these, they made these uh, new words. I don't know if we have anything like that, anything comparable. Okay, so Lema Ketanoi usually is a question because we're about to introduce the Machlekes Tanoim, Bishamli and Basila, and we're going to say that it sounds like Rabbi Yechonon follows this opinion and Rish Lakish follows that opinion. Why should they re? Why should they re-argue something that was argued several hundred years earlier? And to make it worse, one of them is going to end up like Bishamli, which is is on the wrong side of the uh, the fence. So that's this is a problem. Well. Uh, Ketanoi, let's say that this that this machlekes that you just said, Rabbi Yechonai Shlakish, is really an earlier machlekes. Bishama yaimrim kinoi kinoyim asurim. 
let's see, you have a nickname for a nickname. A, uh, a uh, substitute of a substitute. You have to see what that is. Um, but Beishami says that that's also considered a vow. Someone says, this food is forbidden to me, like a, instead of saying kainam, which would have been a substitute, he has another word for that. We'll see what it is. Mekan mena, the Gemara is going to tell us. Um, so Bishamah says that that's, Bishamah is always strict. Bishamah says that's also forbidden. He still says, no, it's only the kinoi, only the exact substitute, but not a substitute of a substitute. My love, is it not? That we have the machlekes, same machlekes. Look, if we if we plug in, if we uh, superimpose the machlekes of Rabbi Yechanan and Rishlakesh over this, it matches perfectly, because it would go like this: Man damar kina masurim. The one that says that the substitute of a substitute is prohibited. That's bishamai kasavar kino yomashnumasin. He holds that it's just another pronunciation of the word coming from coming from the, the, uh, the other nations. So what's the difference, what they pronounce? Any word that's, that's that, it, it's not something that was established to be used. It's any pronunciation of this word. So if a substitute works, a substitute of a substitute will also work. The one that says that a substitute of a substitute doesn't work because the sages instituted certain words and you didn't say it. So that would fit with, with Rish Lakish. Basil would follow Rish Lakish. Where it says life, not the Pshad. We always try to get out of the Lema Kitanai. The Kuli Alma Kinuyim Lashin Umasim. Everyone holds that Kinuyim are from the nations. This is Rabbi Yechelen. Bishami and Basil would hold that. Bishami Savri Bahani Nami Mishta Yumas. Basil Savri Bahani Le Mishta Yumas. Bishami say, that the way languages work is that this is how people would, would they make a substitute for a substitute. And people would actually say this. And Basil says, no, they only have one, uh, one substitute word for, um, for. Uh, is Hillel calling the substitute equivalent of the Yad was a different category. Yad was when he doesn't say carbon at all. Here he's saying carbon, but he's not using the word carbon. Instead of carbon, he's using kainam. But instead of kainam, he's substituting kainam for some other thing. Kainama, for, you know, you a substitute. Verbal yad? Virtual yad? No, because the yad, the, the yad is when he's doesn't say exactly what he's, he doesn't finish the sentence by the yad. But here he is finishing the sentence. But he's just not using the correct word. We're saying that it works anyway. No, Bishami is more strict. Bishami is going to tell us. Yeah, but you, you could use a substitute of a substitute as actually being strict. Because it's telling you that even if you use the substitute of a substitute, that food becomes forbidden to you. Right? Oh, so okay. it's it's actually coming out strictly. Yeah. yeah. Um, how do we understand this machlekas? Is it just a machlekas bisham bisil how language works? Maybe we can't reduce language because the essence of Bisham is the language. You know, we're there at spiritual. So I think this idea is not just right. Language. Right. If you would follow that thing where Bishama is always the potential and Basil is the is the actual what you have, then you would say that even though people don't even though this people don't have this nickname yet, but since this is a sub, this is the language that they use over there. No, they haven't created the nickname yet, but this is a potential nickname. So this is also considered a problem. 
still would say that no, you only use exactly what they've what we've heard them saying. Maybe that's going to be the shot. Iba Yaseima, another interpretation. Bishami Savri goes rinan kinoye kinoye mishum kinoyim. Bisal Savri le goes rinan kinoye kinoye mishum kinoyim. Really, the main problem is the substitute. Kainam. Bishami says that you make a gzera on the other ones as well. Now, on, uh, on the substitute of a substitute, Bishal says you don't make that gzera. The Gemara doesn't tell me what everyone agrees to. <coughs> See, the Gemara's first answer. It said, everyone agrees to Rabbi Yechanan, that Kinuyim Lashen Umay, that's Rabbi Yechanan. Now in Iba Yaseima, it doesn't tell me, are they fo still following Rabbi Yechanan? Uh, that everyone holds that Kinuyim Lashen Umay. Or are they following uh, Rish Lakish, that these were invented words, and there still is a machlekes if there's a gzeira on these invented words. I would like it to be that they're following Rish Lakish. That would give everyone an option here. It's not deciding that it's Rabbi Yechanan over Rish Lakish. One answer is an answer according to Rabbi Yechanan, the other answer is according to Rish Lakish. That would fit, that would fit nicely. Okay. Um, what are the examples of a substitute of a substitute by Nadarim? Tani Rabbi Yasef, Rabbi Yasef taught. Mekan mena, mekan chana, mekan sena. Remember, the original word was kainam. So here it turns it into a, with a prefix and a suffix. Mekan mina and mekan chana and mekan sana. What is the, um, what is the substitute of the substitute of a cherem? Tani mafsha. Mafsha is a, is a name of a, of a sage. Tani mafsha. Mafsha is a name of a sage. Yeah. Very uncommon. I haven't, I haven't seen him anywhere else. When I read this first, I thought maybe this was a nickname for one of for the Khairam. I'm trying to figure out how that rhymes with how that like uh, goes into the word Khairam because it's just a word that I never heard. But um, I saw someone says that Shem Chacham. I forget who said that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I saw it in the in the commentary of the Dharm. He says that it's a name of a of a sage. Right. But he says that he commentary of this one because why? I guess you have only seen the name. Oh, that could be. Okay, so what are the substitute of the substitutes? Harakim, harachim, harafim. It's actually just a plural of the one that we said before. Cherek, cherech, and cherech. So okay, I guess the plural is a is a substitute of a substitute. Kinu kinuim de Naziris. What are they? What are the substitute of the substitute of Naziris? Tani Rabbi Yosef. Rabbi Yosef says, Mechazkana, Nenazkana, Mephichna. Thought we had a Paziach in there. Yeah, it switches. We, lo we lost the Zion from, from the Paziach in the, in the Mephichna. Menazkana that we have in the Ziyach. I, I don't know where the Zion went. Well, whatever the case is, Ibailu. Mifaz khanamai. Mishaz mishaz namai. Mishaz namai. I guess now it's combining the other um, substitute of the substitutes, combining them together. Amli Ravino la Ravashi. Kinma mai. Kainam kama. If someone says kinma, does he really mean to say kainam, which but that was a substitute? Idilma kinam and baisam kamar. Maybe it means um, smelling uh, cinnamon. Kinaman is cinnamon. Amalei Ravacha braid Ravchia Ravashi. Ravacha, the son of Ravchia, says to Ravashi, Kina mai. When he says Kina, does that mean Kina shall turn Does that mean a chicken coop? Kamar, Idilma lashan the kainam. Or does he mean kainam? He said Kina, but he means kainam. Well, Tibai. Remember, we had this word before that Tibai means teku in Masechta Nadarim. Let it say, stay as a question. What's the case of a, of a, of a substitute of substitute of an oath? Shavuel, Shavusiel, Shakukel, Shavuel. Those are the substitutes of the substitutes. Mar says Shavuel ben Gershon Mashma. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, shikukel, uh, uh, 
The first one was Shavuel. The Gemara asks, Shavuel, Shavuel ben Gershom. Shavuel looks like it's the person that we have in uh, the son of Gershon. Ella Shavuel, what it really means. Shavusiel, Shakukel Mahu. What about those? No, take away the Mahu. So uh, the Bach takes that out. So, but in other words, I have to read the, the, the statement of Rabbi Yosef again. Who was the one that introduced these? That doesn't even tell me it's Rabbi Yosef. Shavuvel, Shavusiel, Shakukel. You, know, you have to take out Mao or else it doesn't. Uh... Amar Shmuel, Shmuel says, Amar Ashivta, Layamar Klum. If he says that word, that then he didn't say anything. He says, Ashkika, Layamar Klum, Krishna, Layamar Klum. All of those words don't mean anything. Hey, uh, Krinsha, Krinsha, not Krishna. <laughs> Over here on the side it says, Kurnasa, Krinsha. Didn't say anything. Okay. Nadar um, b'mayhi If he takes a vow, we translated it in that nadar b'mayhi takes a vow of in by Maisha. So then that is considered a a nickname of an oath. Now there is another shot over here. I saw this in the rush. Here's a rush. Rush says that the targum of Shavua is mumsa. And when in moihi is similar to the word umi, and vayishava is that the targum of vayishava is the umi. And so the way he says moihi, he means umi, similar to umi, and that's why it's a nickname. So basically, it's an Aramaic word. Well, let's take a look. Tanya of Shimon Ben Gamliel Aimer. Shimon Ben Gamliel says, Aimer bim moihi layamar klum. If he says it with the bays, taking the second shot of the ran now, then he didn't say anything. The mumsa, the Amar Mahi, but if he says in the in the, in the vow, in the oath that 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 Mahi said, then that, that would be a good uh, good shvua. Now um, let's see, there's two shot here in the run. Second shot is, is that you can't the bays when you say mahi. You can have to say it without the bays. First shot is that if he just says mahi, then that doesn't mean anything. He just says in Maisha. He has to say in the vow that Maisha took. Yeah. The mumsa damar mahi. In the in the vow that Maisha took, or in the oath that Maisha took, that's how he has to say it. Okay, let's start the new Mishnah. Oh, Imer, someone says, what does the Bach add over here? Lachulin Shaychalach. He takes that out. Bach says it's supposed to say Loi Chulin Shaychalach. It's not Chulin that I eat uh, from you. In other words, it should not be full and rather it should be a carbon. It should not be non-sacred. Which means it should be sacred. Yeah. It's a double negative. No, it becomes a positive. The double negative becomes a positive. Yeah, we, the, the the double negative in grammar is not a real thing. I mean, they tell you not to say it, but it's but in all of all writing, you always have double negatives. In Hebrew, you have double negatives all the time. Um, we do not have not a kayan in his service, which 
means doesn't mean we do have a kayan, it means we don't have a kayan. You know, we use the double negative. Um, well, uh, what happened over here is he's taking a vow and he's saying it's not chulen. If you don't have the gears of the Bach that says lay chulen, then you, the way you have to do it is the way the Ram says, they have to say it, la chulen. Remember, there was this whole thing in Shulchan Aruch about don't say, make sure on Rosh Hashanah when you say l'chaim that you say l'chaim taivim and not l'chaim because if you say l'chaim then it sounds like not chaim. Remember that? Anyway, that's what comes up over here. L'chulen. According to the Girsa, that it's l'chulen, you have to pronounce it l'chulen because it's not chulen. Like kosher, it's not kosher. We're talking about a sacrifice that would not be valid. Like dachi, it's not pure. Tahar, I guess he means to say loitar, or maybe not, maybe it just means tahar. It should be like a sacrifice that's tar, maybe. Vitame or a sacrifice that's tame. Nicer, it should be like the leftover of a sacrifice, which is also forbidden. Upigal should be like that. All of those. Um, and when he says that about food, he's actually making it prohibited and it's also. Kiimra, he says like sheep. So what does that mean? It means the sheep of a, of a carbon. Kedirim, like the pen. It's referring to the pen of the carbon, the carbonus. Keitzim, like the wood of the carbonus. Keishim, like the fire of the carbonus. Kemizbeach, like the mizbeach. Kehechal, like the sanctuary. Yerushalayim, because like Yerushalayim. Nadar bech and mikol misham shem is bech, or he takes a vow on anything that serves the altar. Obviously, his carbon, even without the word carbon, or is another be carbon. It's considered a vow, uh, and it becomes prohibited. Rabbi Yudaimer, Rabbi Yudah says, Ha'imer Yerushalayim le'am reklam. Rabbi Yudah says, he says Yerushalayim, and that doesn't mean anything. He has to say, Ki Yerushalayim, like Yerushalayim. It doesn't say that this is Yerushalayim. Okay, let's leave it over here. Okay. Have a good job, everyone. Thank you. Have a good job.